Today we're going to be talking about the Cinco Mic D1, which is a hyper cardioid shotgun microphone that takes either phantom power or battery power, has a high pass filter and an all brass anti-interference construction, and it comes in for just $199. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for watching. We do all kinds of test tutorials, reviews and unboxings, things like that, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content today, please do consider hitting that subscribe button down below the video and also turn on the bell icon to get notifications when new content is uploaded. Originally, the reason that I wanted a microphone like this with battery power was for use on the Zcam E2 F6, which does have a mini XLR port, but the phantom power provided by that port is not really that that great. I was having trouble with other microphones with it, so I wanted something with battery power because also the 3.5 millimeter jack on that camera is not great either in terms of audio quality. So using the XLR port, having battery power would allow me to kind of get the best uh, possible results from an on-camera microphone. And that's why I was drawn to this because it is one of the best priced in the category. Other than this, you've got the $329 Sennheiser MKE 600, which I have actually owned in the past and I, I sold it prematurely before I realized I would kind of really need it. And I regret that because it was a great microphone, but it's a bit more expensive than this one. You also have the $269 Rode NTG2, which I haven't used personally, and the $300 NTG4 Plus, which I did use for a month or so a couple of years back. I have used the Cinco Mic D2 before and I was impressed with its build quality and its sound quality, especially for the price, so I figured I would give this microphone a try. So today we're going to start off just by showing you quickly what is in here when you buy the microphone. So as you can see, you get this semi-hard case, which is, you know, not overly protective, but I don't think it really needs to be. Uh, it's nice to have to take care of your microphone, uh, keep it uh, away from the elements maybe a bit, uh, and also just nice to keep your stuff organized uh, when you're transporting this microphone instead of just throwing it into a bag by itself. Inside you've got your user manual and it's actually quite detailed. So if you have any uh, questions about the specs or anything like that, you can take a look at that and there's quite a lot of information in there. You've got a pretty standard mic clip here with an adapter on the bottom, of course. In this bag, you've also got like a cold shoe type mount, which actually does have, uh, it looks like a 3 8 inch screw on the top. So you can use that uh, to mount with this adapter right on top of the camera. So that's something that I haven't seen included too much. And that does, of course, lend to the use of this microphone since it is battery powered. You could use it with uh, smaller DSLRs and stuff like that where you might be mounting it on top of a cold shoe. So it's nice that they included all that. And you've actually got a couple of cables included. You've got a short little XLR to XLR cable here with a Velcro strap. This cable is about maybe uh, I'm bad at estimating. And you've also got an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable, which is great if you're going to be using this on a DSLR or uh, in some other configuration where you are using this and you're going to use the battery power so you don't need phantom power. This cable is a bit longer, uh, I'd say about a meter or so. So if you have this maybe on a boom pole or something with a handy recorder, you could get a little bit of uh, distance through this. It's kind of an awkward length though, to be honest with you. Uh, I'd imagine something shorter for on-camera use or possibly something longer if you are going to be using it on a boom pole or off-camera somewhere. A little bit of an awkward length, but it is nice that they do include this uh, as well as the standard XLR to XLR cable. Then you've got your foam windscreen here and it's kind of interesting. I've never really seen this before. There is this uh, hard plastic part on the, on the end here with a little screw that you can use to actually tighten it down and clamp down onto the microphone uh, to avoid it from falling off. Now, I'd much prefer, in all honesty, to have just a foam windscreen that fits properly and doesn't fall off. I've never really had it be a huge problem on my other microphones. And then you've got the microphone itself. And we're going to get this case out of the way so you can see this a little bit more clearly. So the microphone itself is actually pretty long. I can't remember off the top of my head the actual measurement, uh, but I will put some up on screen of this microphone compared to other microphones in this class. I think it is one of the longest of this design with the built-in battery compared to, like I mentioned, the uh, MKE 600 and the NTG2 and all that. Uh, it is a fairly long microphone. Uh, and you've only got this one little uh, switch here, which is for the high pass filter and the actual control for the switch is inside there. So you would need a little pin or something to switch it on and off, which I think is uh, a good thing. It's not something you would want to engage accidentally. So if there was a button that sticks out, you might accidentally hit that and that's not necessarily a good thing. So it's good that they thought to kind of put it inside there, but if you do need to turn it on and don't have anything that you can reach that with, it could be a little bit troublesome as well. You can see the slits here on the interference tube are slanted, um, you know, if that actually has any practical effect or not. Uh, it's not for me to really say. We'll, we'll test it out again compared to some other microphones in just a minute. 
And then you've got the kind of mesh uh, design on the front of the microphone. In the back, you've got your XLR connection, of course. And then to insert the battery, you're just going to unscrew this bottom part here, slide it open. And there's just a single AA battery, which should last you about 100 hours. And something that I noticed on this microphone, it's kind of annoying. Um, I think it's the same as the NTG2, but I believe that the NTG4 Plus and definitely the uh, MKE600 both had power switches, or rather switches that you could go from phantom power to battery power, which when you switch to phantom power, essentially, stops uh, draining the battery that's in there. So with this, and I believe also the NTG2, you do have to remove the battery when you're not using it to avoid uh, over draining it and showing up to your set with a dead battery. So generally speaking, this microphone feels well made. Um, you know, it's solid, but you know, I don't know the internals. Who knows how long this will last? Uh, other microphones, of course, have had the chance to prove themselves over years of use and abuse. Only time will tell for this mic, but uh, physically speaking, it does seem to be very well made. So now we'll just run through a couple of quick audio tests. All right, so ignore the mess around me right now. I just wanted to show you uh, kind of the position and distance of the microphone that I'm using as I go through these tests. What I'm using right now and what I usually use in this space is the Deity S Mic 2S, which is a short shotgun microphone, which does allow me to get a little bit closer to my mouth just because it's physically shorter. And ideally, or uh, theoretically, that should give me a better uh, sound quality in terms of the signal to noise ratio, just having it closer to my mouth. Um, so this is how it sounds. And uh, just if I go off axis here a little bit, you can hear how my voice sounds as I'm not directly in front of the microphone. Uh, this does have a bit of a wider pickup pattern. I believe it's a super cardioid pickup pattern. Uh, and being shorter, it's also gonna be a little bit wider, which does definitely affect the sound as well. This is the self noise of the DED S Mic 2S. This is just checking the RF interference as I move my phone around the DED S Mic 2S. So I don't expect there to be any problem, but I'm using Wi Fi and I have Bluetooth turned on and all that. I'm currently playing a video from YouTube. Uh, so uh, if there's going to be any interference, I would expect that you should hear it now. All right, so now I've got the Cinco Mic D1 uh, in place here, as you can see. And I did have to move it back just a little bit so that way it was not in my overhead camera, which I'm not using now anyway. But uh, I just wanted to get it in a position where if I was using it here, uh, it would work. It would not be in this frame typically. And obviously now it's a wider frame to see what's going on. But usually uh, it was clearing this frame and it was also clearing my overhead camera. So this is where I would be using it. Uh, and I did have to uh, raise the actual levels on my recorder, the Zoom F4, uh, to do this coming from the S-Mic 2S. So um, either because of the position or just because of the mic itself, this was coming in a bit quieter. Uh, I had the S-Mic 2S coming in at minus 12 dB, uh, and this was coming in at minus 18 dB uh, before I raised the levels a little bit on the recorder. I'm also currently using phantom power for this microphone. I will switch over to uh, the battery power just to see if there's any difference in a minute. Uh, and I do have the foam windscreen on there right now. And I will take that off in a second too, just to see if there's any difference as well as test out the high pass filter. So first off, I expected to deal with off axis audio as I move from side to side away from the direct line of the microphone, a little bit differently from the S Mic 2S. Uh, because this is a hypercardioid microphone and it's also a longer shotgun microphone and the S Mic 2S. And this is how it sounded off axis with the S Mic 2S. This is now once again with the Wi Fi and Bluetooth on on my phone playing a YouTube video currently. So that way, uh, if there is any issue with interference, you should be able to hear it now. I don't expect there to be, but uh, just in case, this is what you'd be dealing with. So once again, this is talking with the foam windscreen on, on the Cinco Mic D1. And this is now talking with the foam windscreen off of the Cinco Mic D1. So keep in mind that, of course, it's a foam windscreen, but uh, you might want to use that indoors, even if you're going to be moving the mic around at all on a boom pole, or if you have any kind of fan or air conditioning, which could be blowing air across the microphone. So uh, you're probably going to be using that foam windscreen in most cases. So we'll see if it significantly affects the sound quality here. Uh, and if it does, then you might want to be uh, aware of that. So, you know, we'll see. Now I've gone ahead and switched on that high pass filter. And again, this is still the mic bare by itself without the foam windscreen. So now let's take a quick listen to the self noise in this space of the Cinco Mic D1.
Finally, for this microphone, let's quickly switch over to battery power. We'll see if it affects the levels or the sound quality or the self noise. All right, so now we've got the battery put in there. Phantom power is turned off and the actual levels do seem to be about the same. I guess when we listen back, we'll see if it changed at all. I do have the foam windscreen on there. So we'll throw back to using phantom power real quick just to see how that sounds. Finally, for this microphone, let's quickly switch over to battery power. We'll see if it affects the levels or the sound quality or the self noise. And again, this is how it sounds using battery power. So now we'll take a quick look at the self noise when using battery power. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the original DDS Mic 2 S, uh, which is a little bit more similar in form factor, although it does not have battery power. All right, so now we've moved on to the DDS Mic 2, and I did have to pull the levels back on my recorder a bit, so this is coming in a little bit louder than the Cinco uh, D1. Uh, pretty close to what the S Mic 2 S was coming in at in terms of levels, but I do have the position placed pretty much identical to where the Cinco microphone was, and we'll throw it back and forth between these so you can hear me talking on both. What I'm using right now and what I usually use in this space is the Deity S Mic 2 S. So once again, this is talking with the foam windscreen on on the Cinco Mic D1. I do also currently have the foam on, as you can see. Uh, and in terms of off-axis rejection or off-axis coloration, you can see how it sounds as I move off axis axis from the microphone here. This again is a super cardioid pickup pattern, so it should be a little bit wider than the hyper cardioid pickup pattern of the Cinco. Again, you can hear how they sound. We'll go back and forth between them. And uh, I think we have a break in the rain, so I'm gonna jump outside actually, and uh, we'll try and get some quick tests to see how they sound uh, in a little bit more of a noisy environment. Uh, so I also don't expect any problems with interference, but uh, just to be safe, let's move the phone around the microphone while we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on. We're currently playing a video from YouTube and all that good stuff. So again, if you're gonna hear any interference, I assume that you should be able to hear it right now. Almost slipped my mind. Let's take a quick listen to the self noise from the DD S Mic 2. Now let's go outside. All right, so now we're recording right into the DD HDTX, and I'm gonna go through these microphones with these same settings on the HDTX just to make sure that the actual you know, recording quality doesn't interfere with anything, even though I know that the uh, Cinco mic is quieter than the two DD mics, but we're outdoors now and about maybe 30 meters or so that direction, maybe less, there is a street uh, with some cars driving by from time to time. Obviously, I can't replicate that uh, exactly, but I'll do the best I can. There is a slight breeze, uh, but I hope it doesn't interfere. But anyway, you can hear how it sounds when I'm talking, you know, about maybe 12 inches or so away from the tip of the microphone directly into it uh, with some noise around me. So now just for experiment's sake, I am exactly 90 degrees to the side of the microphone, again about 12 inches away or so. Uh, and this is how the DDS Mic 2 S, which is obviously the one that I'm using to start out these tests with, sounds with me talking to the microphone from 90 degrees off axis. I know you can't see me right now, but I am here. Uh, and I'm talking behind the microphone. So again, this is the DDS Mic 2 S, and I'm talking from directly behind the microphone. Again, about 12 inches away, but directly behind the microphone. Okay, this is now the original DDS Mic 2. Uh, which is a little bit longer, but still shorter, physically speaking, than the Cinco microphone. Again, there's cars driving by about 90 degrees to the microphone, probably about 30 meters away or so, and I'm talking directly into the microphone, about 12 inches or so away from the tip of the microphone. Again, sorry if you hear any wind noise. This uh, I can't really do anything about that, uh, but this is the DDS Mic 2. Now, if I move 90 degrees off axis to the S Mic 2, this is what my voice sounds like. Again, there is some surrounding noise. Uh, there are occasional cars driving by actually in both directions uh, to 90 degrees off axis of the microphone. Uh, and this is how it's picking up my voice from the side. Once again, you can't see me, but I am here behind the microphone and I'm talking directly to the rear of the microphone about 12 inches or so away, the same distance as I was before, but now directly behind the microphone for the DD S Mic 2. Okay, so now I am talking to the Cinco Mic D1. Again, we've got cars going by there. It's actually a relatively big truck, but uh, about 12 inches or so off the tip of the microphone here. And I did actually raise the uh, input gain on the HDTX because I know that this is a quieter microphone than the other two DD mics that we tested. But again, with a very light wind, some cars driving by off axis from the microphone, uh, and I'm speaking directly to the front of it from about 12 inches or so, this is more or less what it's going to sound like outdoors. So now if I'm 90 degrees off axis, still about 12 inches or so away from the microphone, this is what the Asinco Mic D1 is going to sound like. So 
Uh, again, I'm about 90 degrees off axis and roughly 12 inches away from the side of the microphone. Finally, once again off screen, but still right here, I am now talking to the rear of the microphone about 12 inches away. And with the Cinco Mic D1, this is what it's going to sound like if you're talking to the rear of the microphone. As one little final closing note here, this microphone didn't work as my intended use on the ZCAM E2F6 rig as well as I had hoped just because it's too long. Not because it's not good or anything, but it's it's long. And just in the way that my rig is where the mount for the microphone is placed, it's tricky to find the spot for it that actually doesn't interfere with like using a matte box, for example, or if I'm using a shorter lens, you know, poking out in front of the lens. And that's no indication of the quality of the microphone, of course. It's just that this microphone is fairly long compared to others. I would love to have a short shotgun microphone with battery power for this very specific use uh, in the future. And if somebody comes out with that, I'd really uh, jump right on it because that would be perfect for the particular use that I'm looking for. However, if you are going to be planning to put this onto your camera rig, just be aware of the fact that it's not the lightest microphone, especially with a battery in there, and it also is very long. So that may or may not uh, work with whatever way you're planning on having this set up on your camera. But as a very basic look at this microphone, if you're looking for a battery powered shotgun microphone uh, and the length doesn't bother you or the weight or anything like that, uh, then this is one of the best priced on the market. It feels solid. And again, only time will tell how well it lasts over the years. But for now, I was pretty satisfied with the performance of this microphone for the price point especially. Anyway, before I ramble too much, let me know if there's any specific questions you have about this microphone down below and I will do my best to get back to you. But if you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.